You're not already a working professional? I find this very surprising. Looking through this code, I would give you an interview immediately. This is like crazy well done. Are you telling me these are AI generated photos or no? There is a lot of like implicit wisdom about some of these decisions being made. I think we've identified one small thing that you could improve if you care to. You could make the structure something like this. It would technically make a better app. Web application that leverages generative AI to simplify online recipe sharing. You've piqued my interest. Right before review, hey, can you please refresh? I've pushed new changes <laughs> is so funny. Are you telling me these are AI generated photos or no? Can I figure out which one of these is AI generated? Garlic bread, yes. Shrimp, yes. It's like they're plausible though. We're here for code review. We're here for like resume review, right? Like we're here for like from a resume perspective. If I saw this on a resume, I'd be blown away. I think that the code layout is very strong so far. I like the patterns that I see where these are like composable. It looks to me like you have a background worker that's triggered off of creating these database things. The fact that you have like a stage, this is actually hilarious because I'm about to talk about this in the on-stream presentation after this. I want to communicate why I'm impressed. I think it shows an ability to like fundamentally understand problems that show up in complex systems. We have this idea of like async work. So first of all, already we're like ahead of the game. Not only are we using AI, it is like a multi-step process. Use AI, the reason why we point this out is that this takes time. It's gonna be a multi-step process that relies on output of previous steps, which takes time. And all of these different steps can have things go wrong, can fail, you can get stuck, so whatever, right? And I think that like the thing that's impressive to me is that because of this, because of these steps, you sort of make the realization that, okay, we need some sort of like async process here for doing all of this, where this is not just like a simple, you call an endpoint, the endpoint writes to a database, you return a 200, right? There is a more complicated workflow here that needs to happen. And so as a result of that, we get a more complicated process. Part of that is this idea of like observability. Because we have this asynchronous process, we come up with a place. I say we, <laughs> I didn't do shit. Uh, Polaris comes up with a place to centralize this information. Okay. And I would say you have it like near optimal, probably optimal for you near optimal for how like we would do it at like Amazon. You have like your recipe ID and you tie that to some status. That status is going to change as you go, right? As you make it to different steps of this multi-step process, because again, our multi-step process, we have, uh, first we have spam filters. Then we have we're going to transition into, I don't know which order you actually do it. Let's arbitrarily say that you go to, um, at the same time, let's pretend that you do image generation and ingredient analysis. My guess is that maybe you actually just do this sequentially. We work through this life cycle of a recipe, of a new recipe. And that life cycle gets updated continually with a status that says like, hey, we just moved into a new step, right? Now we're on step three. We're on ingredient analysis, right? And so if something goes wrong along the way with processing a recipe, you have the observability to start to understand what went wrong and why. The only nit is that if you had money to blow, you would actually have like a different row. It would be denormalized data and you would go like this because you would be shocked at how often it comes up that you actually need to know when step one completed, then when step two completed, then when step three completed. So you would have like the timestamps here. Um, I did this exact type of breakdown like constantly with the systems that we had at Amazon where you needed to know step one completed now, step two completed now, step three completed now. If you don't care about the cost and you probably don't, you're probably still gonna be free tier no matter what. Um, 
if you denormalize this data and you do it this way, you gain additional observability and you gain the ability for these things to happen asynchronously because it doesn't matter what order they get written in. You're not overwriting a part of the process, right? So, and again, like you could do it asynchronously either way and these things could happen in parallel. The only problem is you don't know which steps have been completed unless you have logs or something like that that you could also use, but it's kind of more annoying. This is better. So that would be my one little tip. And I honestly think I'm going to leave it at that because I'm genuinely extremely impressed. Mm -hmm.